Hello, people. Welcome back to an awesome anime review by yours truly, Chad Marco. So, today I have a special treat for you all. This is a review of one of my favorite, one of my favorite, dear to my heart anime called Mitsu Domoe. Now, Mr. Domoe is a slice of life anime. Now, if you don't know, typically anime is going to be like more action oriented, focused on adventures and giant robots, superpowers, proxy battles and whatnot. But you also have a subgenre of anime called slice of life, which is generally, I guess you could say it's kind of like what what like imagine Dawson's Creek <laughs> but in anime form or Boy Meets World or something like that right some sort of like live action drama series that you might have seen on television growing up it's like that but in anime form it's anime that's about more like day to day life uh, situations um, but Mitsu Domoe in particular isn't just a slice of life anime it's a slice of life comedy anime so of course it doesn't take itself too seriously um but not only that it's also will be considered moe you know moe is you know cute girls doing cute things so it's slice of life moe comedy all wrapped up in one awesome package and you know i saw this years ago many moons ago for the first time and i really enjoyed it i never forgot it because it was such an enjoyable experience for me watching this and it was surprising because at the time I wasn't really into slice of life anime. And to be honest, even today, I'm not really into it like that. Um, but Mitsu Domoe showed me <laughs> the the great potential of, of, of slice of life moe comedy style anime. I mean, it really blew me away. Um, and so that's why I decided to go back and watch it again. And I thought maybe... I thought, you know, certainly I'm not going to enjoy it as much as I remember I enjoyed it years ago. But, man, I feel like I had an even greater appreciation for it uh, now more than when I watched it the first time. I had a fantastic time watching this anime, and I said, I got to review this for the guys. So let's get right into it because this is uh, definitely one of my favorites. So here's just a few details about Mitsu Domoe. So Mitsu Domoe is an anime. Well, originally it was a manga uh that was created by its author i believe it's pronounced norio sakurai forgive me you know how i am with these japanese names um it now originally it was a manga and i think the manga has like 19 volumes or something like that and then it was of course in typical fashion it was converted into an anime um unfortunately the anime is quite short-lived it, it, the anime is, is only uh 13 episodes long um but man what a 13 episode that it is so yeah like i said it's slice of life moe comedy so let's talk about the plot so mitsu domoe is about the misadventures of three sisters who always end up causing lots of chaos confusion and discomfort as a result of their unusual personality quirks the show centers around them their classmates um and some of which are just as devious and problematic as they are some less so and their teacher who always ends up suffering because of their mischievous activities um but because it's a slice of life comedy anime there isn't some overarching goal or point to the story like i want to be hokage or i want to be the pirate king is <laughs> you're not going to get anything like that no no seven things to collect um it's very much just a story of many stories pertaining to the lives of the mari the mari the mari the mari <laughs> i still as much as i love it i still barely know how to pronounce it um but it's it's you know, a series of mini stories pertaining to the lives of the Mari, the Mari, <laughs> the Marui sisters, the the Mari, the no, it's Marui, 
the Marui sisters and their friends. Every episode is broken up into four segments, each one focusing on one or more characters and whatever strange predicament that they might find themselves in. For example, one segment might be about Futaba and her boobies obsession, and the next would be about some side character getting caught up in Mitsuba's mess or the teacher getting in trouble over a misunderstanding or something like that. But even though the show's structure can be quite random, there is a certain level of consistency. Like um, in one episode, Futaba cuts up her karate shirt to make new pencil holders for her sisters because she had broke it. And she's never seen wearing that shirt again, even though it was a part of her main outfit beforehand. So there is some level of continuity. Uh, another example is uh, uh, Hitoha and her love of Gachi Rangers. And you see her when she's first introduced to it and she doesn't like it initially but then she starts watching it and she falls in love with it and you it becomes a it becomes a regular thing throughout the series so there is some continuity but it's also very random at the same time um so again it, 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 there's no overarching goal or plot to it so it's not much to the plot other than it's cute girls doing cute things and cute mischievous things i should say so the real meat of it is in the characters let's talk about those so the first character is Yabe Satoshi, and he is the teacher of class six three, and which means he's also the teacher of the Mariu sisters. Um, so he's like the de the designated punching bag of the show <laughs> because more than anyone else, he suffers the the brunt of damage caused by the Mariu sisters. Um, oftentimes, he ends up in these situations where he might be trying to help them. But due to some misunderstanding, he'll end up looking like a pervert or they might make fun of him for being a virgin and whatnot. Uh, but he's a good guy. He just can't avoid getting jammed up in all these awkward scenarios involving the sisters. OK, so the next character is Mitsuba Mariu. Now, she is the oldest of the Mariu sisters, and she's described as being a somewhat precocious, <laughs> sadistic girl. Um, so, yeah, she's the oldest. And on the surface, she's very arrogant, selfish, and even downright mean. She gets a kick out of dominating others and is probably the most intentionally mischievous out of all the characters, oftentimes lying just to cover up her mistakes or as a means to avoid humiliation. Um, despite all of this, though, Mitsuba is shown to actually have a good heart when it really counts being willing to sacrifice and go above and beyond for the sake of her little sisters like now this is one of my favorite parts um when she wins two tickets to the amusement park but then she realizes that both of her sisters want to go um so she pretends that she didn't want to go and gives them the tickets so then so they could go have fun obviously at the expense of her not being able to go as well and dude <laughs> i swear like those moments where you realize that underneath all the nastiness that she displays that she still is very much a protective big sister is really some of the sweetest best moments of the whole anime um it's rare but the payoff is is so good when you see that side of her because oftentimes she she's she's shown lying and, and being devious and, and trying to like she'll she'll put her foot on people's heads and, and mash it into the ground i mean just just really uh sadistic shit <laughs> and but then when, when you see like that like despite all that she's she's still an older sister and she still has that instinct to protect her baby sisters her, her little sisters like i swear like and, you know, it's funny because I would say that Futaba is my favorite going into it, but Mitsuba is definitely my second favorite. But just because of that dynamic of, of having to see her at one point be so mean and but those moments where you see that other side of her when she's like big sister Mitsuba, like it's so sweet. I love it. Um, another one of her traits is like she's she's always concerned about her weight. 
<laughs> because she loves to eat and so there's like different segments where like she's trying to lose weight or or whatnot and uh she also has a rival called uh i think, I think her name is miku and they're very similar in that they're both very arrogant and, and kind of pompous um and so that's a whole nother thing that she has going on so let's go to the next sister so the next one is in my personal favorite futaba mario and she is the middle sister and she's described as being slightly <laughs> slightly depraved muscle girl <laughs> so futaba is the tomboy middle child of the mario sisters she's like the dumb funny one of the trio um kind of like ed from ed ed and eddie she can be so aloof and absent-minded that she doesn't quite understand what's going on at times so even though she's the middle child she does come across as being the most immature and childish um part of what makes her stand out though is her ridiculous strength and athleticism she's often shown breaking stuff with her bare hands or doing impossible physical feats like i know that there was one part where uh she found this boy who was lost and so she put him on her back and then they were just running around town trying to find uh his mother and she was just doing these crazy jumps like jumping over <laughs> jumping over like like river banks and shit just, just crazy just, you know so but um the cool thing about it though is that like that her being so strong is used quite often just for the sake of comedy so uh that's kind of what what makes uh i guess that's her major contribution to, to the comedic elements of the show or at least part of it um and even there was another part in the beginning um when she ends up beating up all the boys in the classroom after misunderstanding the rules of a simple classroom game so right there you have a combination of like her being shown as being kind of uh like dumb and but also being like this this supreme threat in terms of her physical strength um so despite her innocent childlike demeanor people are often intimidated by her because of how destructive she can be without even realizing it because again she's so aloof and absent-minded but unlike mitsuba and hitoha the youngest sister futaba is completely honest and forthright with others she never tries to scheme or lie to get out of trouble instead always being willing to apologize and own up to her mistakes like um there was one episode when she mistakenly thought that mitsuba stole a pair of underwear from the store so she dragged her back to the sales lady forced her to bow and also bowed while apologizing on her be on her behalf so she has like this, this you know even though she comes across as being kind of stupid <laughs> and aloof she actually has like this underlying like 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 honor code that she lives by but uh she's definitely my favorite of the three sisters and um one of her little quirks is that she really loves breast. <laughs> she has like this, this breast obsession. She loves to draw titties and and whenever she sees like a ugh, God, this show gets so stupid <laughs> sometimes. But like <laughs> there was one part when uh Hitoha, you know, Hitoha, she has like like big fat like like cheeks on her face, right? Like like fat little girl cheeks. And she got a pimple on the side of her face, and that combined with the fatness of her cheeks made her face look like a a, a big boob. And Futaba was just so enthralled <laughs> by this, and uh, that's just you know, cause they, they all have their own little quirks. And one of hers is like the whole you know loving breast thing. Um, and she's also portrayed as being kind of like a daddy's girl, as opposed to her other sisters who really can't stand <laughs> their father. You know, at least on the surface, I'm sure they love him um so the next character and the final of the three sisters and the youngest of the three sisters is hitoha mario and she's described as being the somewhat mysterious dark girl so hitoha like i said she's the youngest of the mario sisters um hitoha is very antisocial. she tends to avoid people as much as she can which in turn has made people perceive her to be this dark scary figure within the classroom because of the way she carries herself in particular 
like she has a she has a more much more calm and cool demeanor than the other two despite being the youngest you know she she's actually has like on the surface she seems more mature um and well, all right <laughs> because it's kind of a it's kind of a it's kind of a mix because <laughs> initially she seems that way but then as the as the show go, as, as the show goes on you start to discover that a lot of that is actually due to the fact that she is so withdrawn and prone to isolate herself that she's able to insulate herself from situations that take her out of her comfort zone and expose her character flaws. So she seems mature on the surface when you first like are introduced to the character. Like weird and antisocial, but more mature than the other two, despite being the youngest. But it's not that's not really the case. It's just that she's she's usually able she's just usually able to stay out of situations that expose <laughs> how childish she really is. Like um like she's able like like she's afraid of heights. She has trouble socializing. Um, she has a mischievous side and she can be very insecure. I know um early on she was shown having trouble trying I think she was trying to I think maybe it was the teacher who was trying to get her to, to open up a bit more. And then, um, so she was practicing, like trying to socialize, but she was doing it by herself. And then another girl saw her and thought she was communicating with ghosts. I mean, <laughs> look, stupid shit. But <laughs> right. But, um, one of the running gags with her is how she's embarrassed about being into a children's show called Gachi Rangers. And so uh, she's always trying to hide it. And, and Gachi Rangers is like a, a fake Power Rangers within the Mitsudomoe universe. Um, so she likes it, but she's always trying to hide it. Again, that insecurity. But then she feels bad when she can't connect with other people who openly like the show, like the teacher. Um, and this might be a weird comparison, but she kind of reminds me of King from One Punch Man in that everyone perceives her to be one way because of her exterior when in reality she's much more fragile and sensitive than just about anyone else um but another one of her quirks is that she likes animals um uh, she has like a, a hamster called nipples and there's another another point in the story where they find a cat i swear i, I just gotta say this because this shit had me bugging because it was so stupid right like they've it was one segment where they, they found a cat. <laughs> and of course, he told how I really wanted it because she loves animals. And so they go back home to tell their dad about the cat. And at first, he doesn't want the cat. He's like, no, we're not getting the cat. And then Futaba said, but I think she said, uh, but dad, the cat says that that uh, she wants to go to the Madu household. And then he was like, oh, well, if she said that, I guess I don't have a choice. I, dude, like, just dumb shit like that. <laughs> just, it, it's, it's stupid shit like that that just has me bugging when I watch this show, bro. Okay, so the next character is uh, so Sojiro Mario, And he's described as being the kind of shady dad. So Sojiro, Sojiro, Sojiro is the father of the Mario sisters. Um, now, by all accounts, he's a good father, but because he looks like the fat ugly bastard from all the hentai dojins people often mistake him for being a creep or a pervert and this is especially true when they see him with his daughters like there was one episode when the sisters they forgot their change of underwear at home so he tried to bring it to them at school but then on his way there everyone just sees this big hairy man running around with panties in his hand <laughs> so they call the cops on him and he gets arrested, which is like another running running gag throughout the anime where, um, you know, he's always being arrested for looking like a creep. Now, Mitsuba and Hitoha are kind of embarrassed by him, so they keep their distance when they can. But Futi Futaba and him have a very close relationship. Um, there's a really sweet segment where he's trying to help her prepare for some sort of like outside activity day at school. And it's nighttime and she has him doing all these like silly things to simulate the coming event. But, you know, it, it's all very heartwarming, Moe slice of life stuff. And, um, now, he might seem to be a bit aloof. 
but he will show at times that he's very much aware of the nuances of his daughter's personalities and knows how to deal with each of them individually in the best way possible like i know there was one part when um like you know futa was kind of dumb <laughs> so so she still believes that santa claus is, is real and so he got sick but he knew that it was important for her to to you know just to, to to have that santa claus experience so he got the girls to pretend to be santa claus and and, and, and whatnot and also that other part that i was talking about earlier when uh when mitsuba got the, the tickets to the uh, the uh the uh the amusement park and she tried to pretend like she didn't want to go so she could give it to her sisters but then he, he like he peeped what was going on and so he went ahead and got another ticket so all of all of them could go so so he seems kind of like like he seems like he might be like that dumb bumbling dad, but he knows all of them and he and he, he, can, he can tell like what what's going on as far as like what they're thinking and, and the little drama that's going on between them. So the next character is Saito Shinya and he's described as being the honor student, I, I guess. <laughs> so uh, Saito is the Chad of the school, but he doesn't really like it. Most of the girls are obsessed with him to the point of stalking and other creepy craziness, but uh, all that does is make him very uncomfortable. But um, besides that, he's a star athlete, which makes him get along well with Futaba because, you know, she's a Super Saiyan and because she's more interested in boobies than boys. She's pretty much the only girl he can be comfortable around because she's not always trying to, you know, flirt with him and get with him and shit like that. He's also friends with Chiba who is always trying to corrupt him and turn him into a pervert like he is. But uh, Sato is pure of heart and a good boy, but he still gets wrapped up in Chiba's and, and, Mario, and the Mario sisters' nonsense, but uh, who can avoid that? And so the next and final character that I'm going to go in depth with is Chiba Yude, who's described as being a super athlete, even though I, <laughs> I didn't really see much evidence of that. But... Uh, Chiba is the best friend of Salto, but unlike Salto, the girls don't really like him, which makes him very jealous of Salto and leads him to try to corrupt him so he can be more like him. Um, now, he's a, nice, he's a nice counter to Salto because he's much, he's much more de like depraved and sketchy. And, and in an anime about three girls, for the most part, it's nice to have a character that gives you that perspective of a, of a, like a horny teenage boy on the cusp of, of, of puberty and the hijinks that go along with that. And I think really that's what that's the role that Sato and Shiba kind of occupy, right? They're sort of like the good and bad of of, of what a, a boy would be experiencing in these uh in, in, in these particular circumstances. Uh so it does give it more varieties. It's, it's not always from the perspective of, of the girls. Um and just as some honorable mentions, like a few other characters that I'm not going to go in depth with, you have uh, Miku Tsukisaki, which, like I said earlier, is the rival of Mitsuba. And uh, she has a little brother. I forgot his name, but uh, he likes Gachi Rangers. And so she has a whole thing with Hitoha. There's also the, the nurse in which the teacher has a crush on her and whatnot. But she's really dense and kind of dumb like Futaba. Um, and she's really... Uh, Kind of a klutz and then you have the uh, salto fan club which is like a trio of girls who are obsessed with salto and always following him around and stalking him doing weird shit um there's another girl i don't know her name but i always call her ghost girl <laughs> because she's really into like paranormal things and because of that she's really into hitoha who has like this paranormal this paranormal aura about her and so that's how they have a connection and whatnot. So those are the main characters of Mitsudomue. There are a few more, but those are like the most important ones. So next, I'm going to talk about the good and the bad. And then we're going to score this bad boy. So stay tuned. You playlist. Did I ever write that down? I don't think I did. Okay. So let's talk about the good and the bad. And then I'm going to score it. So let's start off with the good. So this cartoon is legitimately funny. And I I mean that. Like it's laugh out loud funny. 
and I don't think I've ever laughed this much at an anime. I think this is probably the funniest anime I might have ever seen. Um, Primordial High might be close, but this was definitely the funniest one. And I mean, laugh like I'm bug, <laughs> like bugging, bro. And um, the humor is is very strange, but it, it, it's it's like a lot of, a lot of the humor revolves around like reoccurring jokes, like uh, the uh, blood puddle thing when uh somebody might fall and they they'll like uh they'll get hurt and then like you'll see like a uh a, a pool of blood just spill out underneath their head but what's funny about it is the sound effect they use is like water coming out of a bottle <laughs> like it, 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 it seems so simple and, and, and stupid but it, i swear like it's stuff like that it just like just, it's, it's the little things like that that just have me laughing and um and then you have like Futaba's breasts breasts obsession and then the uh, jokes with the uh, dad being mistaken as a pedophile and stuff like that uh, that's definitely one of the the, the 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 key elements of the humor in this anime it's it's the, it's the things that like kind of keep happening and it's like it, it just it just works it like they, they know when to pull it out and it it, it works just about every time um and another part of the humor of this anime is in um like there are a lot of like these these situations where there are misunderstandings about what's going on like i know there's one part uh where shiba chiba he discovers that he toha has a porno magazine and so he really wants to look at it but she won't let him look at it and so um like he he begins to kind of plan and plot how he's gonna get it, and so he's telling Salto that uh, that he, how he's trying to get it, but Salto misunderstands him and thinks that he's trying to steal her panties, <laughs> not the magazine, but her actual panties, and so they're going back and forth, and th again they just they're misunderstanding each other, but it's like that's a big element of the humor in this show is just people not really understanding uh like what like like they might see th they might see one thing but something else is going on but they don't get it um like another example would be like the hamster nipples and there was one part where all the kids were talking about like rubbing nipples <laughs> holding nipples and all that and then the nurse was listening but she didn't see what was going on so she thought they were talking about like fondling breasts and stuff it, like that's a big element of the humor in this anime it's just it's like these little misunderstandings about what people are talking about and what they're doing um and i think another Another strong element of the humor in this is uh, really effective use of each character's quirks, and and uh, how they play off how they play off off of each other, right? Um, I know, like just going back to the whole the whole uh, hamster thing, right? There was one part where um, he told how I got jealous when nipples started play, started paying more attention to mitsuba because she had these underwear that had like a hamster face on it and so now nipples was showing more attention to mitsuba than he toha and he toha got really jealous about that and like and because of her like her un her kind of like over emotional unstable personality again it's, it's kind of it's an underlying thing but it's always there and it comes out every now and then and, and here you saw it she got so jealous that she was like, I'm going to, I'm going to cut her underwear. <laughs> I'm going to cut her underwear off and, and cut it up. And then I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> like just going to that extreme. But like, that's the, that, I think that's the perfect example of how you have, uh, how, how they use these particular quirks and then they kind of make them play off of each other. And then right after that, because he told her, you know, of course she can, she didn't go through with it. And once Mitsuba realized that, she started trying to dominate Hitoha and humiliate her. And it, it all just makes for like a very funny scene. But that's what I think is one of, one of the, the best things about this show. It's like they give all these characters like these, these quirks. And you don't quite like, like at first it's like you don't quite understand why these characters like this or do certain things. But they always manage to use it in a way that like to create these these funny moments especially when they combine these different quirks 
and play them off of each other. Like Futaba's breast obsession with uh, somebody else's whatever the fuck, right? You just you take these weird quirks and you put it in a situation and you mix it up and it's just funny things happen. Um, and another thing that I really like about it is that it can be very endearing at times. And when I when I say endearing, I mean like damn near about like make you cry. <laughs> so it is a comedy anime, but it still manages to have like these very sweet moments where it, it just, it really just punches you right in the feels. Like there were a couple times where I felt myself just tearing up because it was just so sweet. Like, not like, like top 10, top 10 saddest anime devs type shit, but just like very sweet moments between the characters that you've grown attached to. Um, I know one moment in particular is, um, and I mentioned this before about like the uh, uh, when Futaba had cut up her shirt to to make pencil holders for her sisters because because remember she she was doing like some some Super Saiyan shit being all like rough and rowdy and she ended up breaking Mitsuba's desk and I think she broke the pencil holders at the same time and then Futaba got really emotional about it. Even though Mitsuba, she Mitsuba took it quite well. She didn't like overreact about it, but Futaba did, and that was because Futaba knew that that pencil holder meant a lot to her. Even though Mitsuba didn't express it, she knew that she really messed up this time, and so Futaba she went like hiding and and whatnot um, because she was she was so ashamed of what she did, and. In order to make up for it, she took her karate shirt, which she was wearing up until that point in the anime, and she cut it up and turned it into pencil holders for her and her sisters. And she gives it to uh, Mitsuba. Hitoha said she didn't want it. That was kind of fucked up, but whatever, right? And so, but what's so sweet about that moment to me is that um, later on, in the anime, you see that Mitsuba is still using that pencil holder that Futaba made for her, right? And, and, and it's strange because Mitsuba is, is kind of like, uh, she, she's kind of like just, just she's, she's, she's a little pompous. Like, you would think she would be too good to use something like that. Like, she went from having this, this, this cool, expensive pencil holder to using somebody's cloth <laughs> for a pencil holder, but she held on to it. And, but that was just a, a sign that was just a sign of her care and that 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 sisterly bond that she had with uh Futaba as well as he told her like she could have just threw it away like oh get this piece of shit out of here but she she kept it throughout the whole anime and when they highlighted that like that was another one of those like just really sweet moments that just that almost I, I swear like I didn't cry, but it got it got me close. It was just it was so sweet because you would have never expected her to hold on to it like that. Um, and there was another part where um, you know I talked about how he told her she likes the Gachi Rangers, and she's very embarrassed about it, and that's like a running gag throughout the anime. But then there's one part in the story where. Like she finally just says fuck it, and she just like I think it's like gym class, and she tells every like like she I think she pulls up her shirt and shows the the the, uh, the, the gachi belt toy, <laughs> and she's like I don't care anymore. I love gachi rangers and then all that shit, and then all her classmates are like yeah, I, I like it too. I like <laughs> like like one by one they all reveal the fact that they like gachi rangers. Um, either as much as she does or they have like a passing interest in it and so in that moment she feels like accepted by the whole classroom like when she thought that everyone would make fun of her for it everyone not only did they did they uh you know embrace it you know they like gachi rangers too and so it was kind of a, a moment where you know this anti-social character was finally able to bond with her classmates and you know that was just a, another very sweet moment and um and again the, another one that i liked was with futaba and the dad i already talked about that one but um 
Man, I swear, dude, it, it's it's some moments in this shit that's it, it's some real tear jerkers, and they come out of nowhere. They come out of nowhere because the show is just so silly. <laughs> but uh, that's the good. Now on the bad. And all right, so the first bad is, I guess, is more of a it's, like it's I, I guess it's more of a personal thing. But I feel like it was just too short. <laughs> and what I mean is. I like this show so much that you're you're looking at the folder with the episodes in it, and it's it's 14 episodes. And at first, you're just you're having fun. It's like yeah, Mr. Dumbway. But as you keep going and going, you start to realize like oh shit, it's about to come to an end. Like you develop such an attachment to these characters. Well, if you like it as much as I do, right? And as as it gets closer and closer to the end, you start to realize like, oh shit, it's almost over. And like, and like it, it feels like it's over too soon. Like right, right when you develop that 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 peak bond with the characters and these scenarios and shit, it's over. You know. So I, I just feel like it was too short. Now, of course, the manga goes on beyond where the anime stops. Like that's typical. But let's face it, it's nothing quite like the anime when you got the sound effects and the voice actors and the music and the animation. So um, it's not quite the same. But I will go read the manga because I do I do love it that much. Um, I don't even know if I was aware that it had a manga when I first saw it. You know, but this time since I was looking more into it, I was like, oh, they got a manga. And check this out, I found out they got eight more episodes too <laughs> that I haven't seen yet. It was like a, uh, a a second season, and I never knew it, it was out. So, but I still stand by this. Like it, it, it just it feels like it's too short. Like this 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 is an anime that really is deserved at least like fifty episodes, bro. Like it, any less than fifty, and I'm complaining. Okay, so another bad thing about it is that the humor can be very 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 awkward <laughs> at times, and. You guys know that the Japanese have a a, a, a different a different uh, <sighs> the, the the Japanese have a, a different style of humor, um, and I guess as far as like where they draw the line in terms of explicit content can be kind of weird, right? And I think. That even it can, can be applied to anime, right? Because we all remember watching anime growing up on a um, on Toonami or Adult Swim and whatnot. And what always made the 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 anime stand out as a as opposed to like American cartoons was that anime was just edgier, like it had more violence. It had more serious uh, subject matter, uh, you know, sexual themes sprinkled here and there. Um, I mean, just for example, you look at something like Dragon Ball Z, you see uh, Goku and, and and Raditz having their 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 torso blasted open <laughs> by a, a special beam cannon. You see Tien getting his arm punched the fuck off. You know, or you see a cartoon like Cowboy Bebop or Trigun, you know, but these are like action examples of that where you have a cartoon, but it's much more edgier in terms of like of, in terms of like the violence. But that same thing is true when it comes to comedy as well. And I think that and, and that's that's one of the, the, the weird things about Mitsudomwe is that the comedy can be very awkward because again it's that unique japanese style it like just just for example right there's one segment where i think M M mitsuba got hurt and they ended up having to go to the nurse's office and so while they're in there trying to repair her <laughs> repair her like fix her up another kid walks in with a bag full of piss packets because <laughs> for, for some reason hold up I fucked something up. Okay, so, but for, for some reason, they needed to collect piss samples from all the kids, right? Okay, I guess that's what they do in Japan. And so she gives the bag to the nurse. 
And then the nurse, she, she being a klutz, she drops the bag of piss packets. And so she's like just stepping on piss packets. And there's like, there's there's sixth grader piss just flying everywhere. <laughs> and, you know, that's, that's a type of humor that you would just never see in like a a, a cart like like something on like Cartoon Network or like like uh, I don't know just throwing something out there the what the kids next door uh, SpongeBob uh, Ed, Ed and Eddie what like stuff like 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 weird humor like that or or even here's another one right where you know I told you Salto is friends with Futaba as well as Chiba so they go over to Futaba's house. And they're in her room helping with a project or something. And then she leaves. Now, Chiba, being being the mischievous one, he wants to go into their, their dresser and do a panty raid. And so you're sitting there and you're you're watching a, a, a sixth grader go through like these other sixth graders panties. And again, this is this is just that type of humor that you would never see in a in a traditional like cartoon network cartoon or a, a disney channel cartoon or something like that like it's that it's that weird japanese humor that can be very awkward because like they push it further than what we're used to just like with the anime with the action anime and the violence and the blood and the subject matter it's the same thing here and, and see you might you might compare it to something like South Park, right? And he's like, oh well, South Park completely like that's American and it pushes all the envelopes. But see, the difference with South Park though is that South Park goes all the way. Like from the very beginning, you know South Park is it's, it's not a children's cartoon at all, <laughs> right? And and so even though like they do like, like all right, so you got an episode with what was it Cartman put food up his butt and then. <laughs> shit it out of his mouth <laughs> like like i mean that makes this humor looks tame by comparison but the difference is that south park establishes itself as like it, it's not a children's cartoon at all whereas in japan you know a lot of the anime that we watch is very much like their children's cartoon they might be targeted towards like teenagers like from like maybe like 10 to to 15 16 or whatever but that's the target audience unlike something like south park so it's kind of it's still kind of different because at times they push things further than you would expect them to like oh here's one of the worst examples <laughs> i swear to god so there was one segment where futaba found a picture of her dad when he was young and he happened to look just like salto so she brought the picture to school and then the Salto fan, gl fan club, they found it. And so they were wondering, how did Futaba get this picture, like <laughs> this rare picture of Salto? And it was of him, I think like, 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 it, it, I think he had like, like some, some swimming trunks or he got out of the bath or something like that. And so they were trying to figure out how she got this picture, <laughs> not knowing that that was a picture of her dad when he was young. And so she was, and so she she ends up telling him, telling them that, oh yeah, we have baths together all the time. So they're thinking that Futaba is having like bath time with Salto, when in reality she's talking about bathing with her with her dad, which is normal. So one of the girls they go over to her house, thinking that she's gonna have bath time with with Salto, and then in walks the big fat <laughs> creepy dad, and that's the joke. Like I mean, it's it's. Again, it's that weird, awkward Japanese humor. So you got to kind of expect that going into it. Now, I guess it's not like to me because, I, you know, I'm an anime OG. I know what to expect when I watch shit like this. So it don't really bother me. But if you're not used to that unique brand of Japanese humor where where they're not afraid of of, of using like legitimately like creepy situation like that, that last one is just straight creepy, right? They're not afraid of using like little creepy situations like that for comedy. You know, if you're not used to that, then it's going to be very awkward. But someone like myself, you know, again, I know what the Japanese style of humor is. It, it, it's kind of like um, when you go back to like even Dragon Ball, right? That part where Boma exposed herself <laughs> to Master Roshi to get a Dragon Ball. I mean, that's creepy as fuck. 
But that's that's the Japanese style of humor. You would never see something like that in like a American children cartoon. But in in, Jap in Japan, again, the, the 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 standards are different. The comedy is different. So yeah, so this could be a bad thing or something that doesn't really matter depending on how used you are to the uh, Japanese style of humor. <sighs> okay, so that's the good and the bad. Now for the score. So for the action, I give it a two out of five. Now, obviously because it's a slice of life anime, there's not going to be a lot of action to begin with. So that's not really a big deal. But there is a bit of like, like there's a lot of physical comedy in particular because of the Futaba character and her, you know, her being this athletic, uh, this athletic beast girl. So there is some bit of action in it, but it, but usually it's pertaining to like something that she's doing as far as like karate chopping motherfuckers or something like that. But generally speaking, there's not a lot of action in, in terms of like, you know, fighting and certainly not like gun fights or nothing like that. Most of the action is just going to be like physical comedy, people getting hurt, stuff, stuff like that. So the plot, I give it a three out of five. Now that might seem a bit high for something that's just like, like broken up into different like comedy bits and segments and so random but i i have to give them credit for how effective they are at crafting these individual segments and because a lot of them are just legitimately funny <laughs> and that's why I, I i have to give them credit for that because a, a lot of it in terms at least in terms of comedy is very well written and and i think um even outside of like the comedy aspect, you have those moments, like I said before, that are very sweet and endearing, those tearjerker moments. And that's only accomplished by, you know, a like very effective writing and setting things up. So again, there there isn't like some big plot, like, like it, there, you know, that's not there. But the individual stories are well written in my opinion i think they're quite well written that's why i will get the plot three out of five but again it's not like a big overarching plot it's just you know these little things happening in segments throughout the episode but it's very well written so animation i give it a three out of five so it's not it's not amazing but it's definitely um um it's definitely solid overall um i think one of the best things about it is the art style the art style i mean you want to talk about cute girls <laughs> doing cute things i mean i made a tweet on my on my twitter account i said uh i think i said uh the japanese have truly mastered the art of cute and that was um that was i was talking about you know the the art style in Mitsudomoe, where just all the kids, all the characters are just so adorable and so cute. And I think that's really the strong, the strong part of the animation of this particular anime is its art style. I've seen some people not really like be a big fan of it. Cause it, it like, don't get me wrong. It, it's a little, it's almost too cute, right? Because the main characters are sixth graders, but they look like like third or fourth graders. That's just how cute they are. And even some of the adult characters look like too cute for their age. And so the art style is almost overly cute, but it's so cute <laughs> that you can't help but appreciate it. And you know, there is anything like, like quality moments or anything like that. The animation is smooth throughout, um, but I guess it's all, it's all in relation to what you would expect in a slice of life comedy anime, right? So keep that in mind. The music, I'll give it a two point a two point five out of five. Nothing amazing about it. It's not really necessarily good. It's not necessarily bad. It's just like standard slice of life moe music. Um, there are a couple of standouts, but I think even the tracks that stand out are, is, is more so because of like um, when you listen to it. It gives you kind of like this nostalgic feeling, you know. That's if you, you know, you know, like the show as much as I do, I guess. And the comedy, I gotta give it a five out of five. I think that's the first. 
in my anime reviews but yeah the comedy i give it a five out of five like i said before this show is legitimately funny this show is legit like laugh out loud funny and it's not just funny man this show just just uh makes me feel good like even during some of the segments that, that that weren't that funny i i just always felt good watching this show like whenever I, whenever i put this on i just it instantly puts me in a good mood it just has that kind of effect on me that kind of aura you know and and that's why I, I have to give it a five out of five in terms of the comedy because it's for something to make me laugh out loud that says a lot right and ichi it gets a 2.5 out of five there is some sexual themes here and there but in particular it's like things like uh, like futuba's uh booby obsession or hitoha carrying porno magazines around and stuff like that so it's not like it's not overly it's not like explicit but you do see quite a, a quite a lot of breasts because of futuba <laughs> and her obsession so overall i give mitsu domoe a whopping eight out of ten eight out of ten i definitely recommend this if you're looking for something different um if you've never had the slice of life moet experience before i think this is well, i don't want to say like this is the place to start but i think that it definitely gave me a good impression of the genre um and you know, having gone back to it, it's making me want to, you know, explore that genre a bit more because, you know, cer certainly this isn't the only one, the only good one, right? Just like saying Berserk is the only good action anime. So there must be like, like, like if this is just a taste of what's to come, man, but I definitely recommend this if you've never had that, that slice of life uh moe experience because I, th I think that this might convert you <laughs> because man this really shows the power of this particular subgenre of anime um and especially if you already like this sort of stuff then definitely check it out because again I, may maybe i'm just dumb as hell but this show i just love this show so much i i, I just i can't hype it up enough like i definitely recommend mitsu domoe so that was my Mitsudomoe anime review. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And I'll be returning later with more reviews and all that kind of shit. So, Johnny.